So I decided to do something a little different and uh, work on something that I love. I love retro consoles, more so the Nintendo stuff. So I did a YouTube short, I think that's what they're called, YouTube short a while ago about, maybe it was about two months ago, and I actually picked up a Nintendo 64 for $30 in the box just like this, and I think I got a sweet deal. So let me kind of catch you up to speed on what I got. So $30, I got the box just like this, and here's what's inside, which I think is a really steal of a deal for what I paid and what it's possibly worth. I love Nintendo stuff, and there's a couple of games I'm looking forward to getting into, and uh, just trying to finally beat them, because I never got around to beating it. So first off, let's take out this bubble wrap one. This is pretty cool. I guess they were trying to upgrade this and work on it, just never got around to it. This is actually the expansion pack, so now this upgrades it to four megs of memory, if I'm to understand. There were three dedicated games that you had to use for it and then like a bunch of other games that actually helped increase the image quality of it so that's a cool little upgrade and we'll do that in this video nintendo 64 now i verified it did work but for 30 dollars it does have a little issue the reset button if you look at it it's kind of stuck so if you move it around or you press too much pressure over here it actually resets the game so we're going to open this up and definitely fix that reset button but for the most part i mean minus a little cleaning that we're going to be doing this thing is in great shape now it came with three controllers and i'm actually kind of happy that it came with the blue controller because that was actually my favorite color controller back in the day and one thing i did find in here kind of get ahead is that they actually bought the joystick for the Nintendo 64 so to replace this so I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, definitely install that the Nintendo 64 these joysticks were just notorious for the drift I mean the game that kind of killed it all was that actually uh, Mario Party where you had to do the whole 360 and if you ever played Mario Party on Nintendo 64 and you had to do that whole twisty twisty with it yeah you would destroy these and actually this one if you look at it pretty worn out so I'll definitely be putting that in so I'm actually glad that they had all this stuff so I could go ahead and do it memory card pretty cool and the games so the games Paper Mario 64 excited about that very looking forward to playing that Wayne Gretzky hockey another one favorite Star Wars episode one racer this is actually one of my favorite racing games perfect dark Ridge Racer 64 Needs a little cleaning up on that uh, controller pack I think this is another memory card for it I don't know we'll have to look at that mayhem wrestling game let's see Mario Kart 64 nice and let's see WCW Nitro along with these cool little covers to actually keep these games from uh, getting messed up so that's what we're gonna do now I went ahead and bought a few things one of them hopefully should be here tomorrow so the first thing I bought was actually this got it on eBay paid like $20 for it it's a cover that'll go over here and actually keep this thing from getting dusty so kind of preserve it I kind of like this thing and this n64 to HDMI converter so I could play it on my TV now from what I understand this is not really an upscaler but more so just to make it work on your modern TV a CRT would be perfect to play with this and there are mods and everything to upscale it but I'm not big into that I just want to plug it in and play as long as it don't look too horrible this should work perfectly so yeah so to clean it up I my iFixit toolkit q-tips isopropyl alcohol some shop towels I got to get some toothpicks to kind of get a little gritties out of here so I'm gonna fix the 64 reset issue over here fix one of these controllers maybe show cleaning one of these cartridges over here and then we'll fire this thing up see how it looks and um get to playing all right I fix it toolkit not a sponsor but definitely like this toolkit because well it has the uh, screw thingy for the Nintendo 64 and all the other ones and all that stuff so that's pretty cool it was a great birthday gift or Father's Day gift can't remember so we got one two three four five six screws and I think I'm gonna have to use the longer ones or will that fit oh yeah they all fit in there I understand this got to come off we're just gonna use this to pry it there we go they do have a special tool from Nintendo but I think it's collectible might cost money I don't know what that is hair dust leaves gross More hair, cobwebs. 
dead spider right there, a little red dot there. Yep, pretty gross. So I'm thinking I have to completely take this thing apart to kind of get it up to par. Because I really don't want to leave this thing in here like this and not clean all this out. So let's keep going. Now, I tell you what, they used a ton of screws for this. This is the Nintendo 64. Lots of dust. So we'll clean that. We'll make that pretty. Alright, we got this cover off. And we got that off. I mean, outside of dust, this board looks great, so I'm very happy with it. I've seen videos where people have these and they're all corroded and broke junk on it, so... Yeah, this was just clean off real quick, just dust it off. And then all this other parts over here, I'll just wipe everything with alcohol, and this thing is going to look great again. Alright, so let's go ahead and just dust this off. Like I said, this thing is not bad. Not bad at all compared to some I've seen in videos I've watched. It's actually in pretty good shape. That feels good. No issues there. This moves freely. No issues there. So, just going to clean all this up right over here. Just because where dust has been sitting. Let's go ahead and brush this off real quick. Loosen it and break off the dirt. Same thing with this piece. Let's pull these big chunks out. Just brush it just to break it off. Now this reset button is getting kind of stuck and it's freed up a little bit. So I think what we're going to do is just pop this out right here. Yeah, we just got a lot of gunk in here. So we'll just give it a good cleaning. And this should come back to life. Yeah. So a quick change of plans. As I started cleaning it, I found out that there was some really sticky stuff that just didn't want to come off. And I don't know. It probably could have been that this Nintendo 64, and I've seen it a lot with uh, computers, was in a vapor's house. Because it had this, this film. And... It's easier to clean on the electronics, but instead of trying to sit there in the garage and scrub it off, I just decided to give it a bubble bath. So I just kind of threw everything in here and that'll be fine. I'm gonna let it soak. All I'm using is Dawn dish soap. It's safe. It doesn't hurt the little duckies. So it's gotta be good for the Nintendo 64. So I'm gonna let this sit and soak for about, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes. Come back, give it a little quick scrub. And hopefully that film should be gone. Pretty sure it's the old vape stuff. So this is actually working pretty good. That gunk and film is actually coming off and it's cleaning pretty decent. So definitely a good idea. And it's gonna make it a lot easier, especially to get these vents cleaned out pretty good. And keep cleaning. Looks good. At least my wife can't say I didn't clean the sink. All right, that actually worked out pretty good. Dawn dish soap definitely worked out pretty good. And 
it was a lot easier to get all that crud out and the little engraving right over here so that's pretty nice and the main reason why I took this thing apart is my reset button works fine so we should be good on that so I think what I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put this thing back together off camera because well it's pretty much the same thing just backwards and we're gonna go ahead and move to the controllers all right time for the controller and I think the way I'm gonna do this is take all these apart including the two gray ones and just give them the whole rubber ducky bubble bath and replace the joystick on this one since I really like the blue and then eventually if that one works good I'll find that brand and I'll order other ones that will actually work pretty good but I don't know what the light sees but it's got sticker it's dusty it's crusty it's it's pretty nasty so let's get started two screws inside there and hopefully this will reach yep yeah that crust is even in here a little bit of corrosion but we could clean this up real nice let's take this off Not too bad. It really gets a lot of crud right in over, over here. And that's why these buttons tend to stick, so we'll be able to clean that out. Now for this, I'm just going to pull this out right over here. Just got to take that out. And there we go. These contacts, I'll just clean them with some alcohol and that'll be fine. And we'll just wash all this. So for cleaning all those little parts and pieces and the screws, um, I like to use the Ultraxonic cleaner. Wish this was a little bigger, but it's fine. I usually mostly use this for small engines like carburetors and stuff, but I keep it clean before using it for anything else. Uh, you can clean chips, motherboards, memories. I mean, the key is, is number one, to dry it after it's done. And number two, don't use harsh chemicals. I just use Dawn dish soap when I'm working on electronics, plastics, and I find that to work fine. So set to 40 degrees Celsius. If you go kind of higher with it, you actually take the risk of damaging the uh, rubber pieces. 40 works pretty good. Five minutes and these parts will look brand new and it'll get that crud out so much easier. So let's go ahead and start it. And I'll show you what it looks like when it comes back. All done. So yeah, this thing works pretty good. I wish I would have broken that sticker, but that sticker's on there. Oh no, it's coming off like really easy. So, yeah, it did what it's supposed to do. Now, the key thing is, as you can see, the rubber pieces are clean. They look fine. They don't have none of that gunk in there, especially some of these plastic pieces. So, this worked pretty great. I'm going to go ahead and do the top piece, and then we'll put this thing back together. So, now I just want to show how good these ultrasonic cleaners are as far as cleaning this stuff. I mean, this thing was just cake dirty and I mean, it looks brand new and especially over here on the D-pad where it just gets in all the crevices over here. I mean, I don't have to do nothing. Now, typically what I'll do next is I'll just put this in water. I actually got to get a little container for it, put it in water just to rinse it off, blow it out, wipe it. And these things are good to go. The Ultrasonic Cleaner works great. I got to say it. And my recommendation is, is don't use harsh abrasive chemicals. Dawn dish soap works perfectly. I mean, these screws, I mean, the camera doesn't show it, but everything looks pretty good. Um, if you're going to be refurbishing this, I definitely recommend a ultrasonic cleaner. They're pretty cheap. Get one bigger than the one I have over here. It'll make life a lot easier. So let's finish cleaning this up.
Now for the control, I just went ahead and did this off camera, but pretty much all I do is I take some isopropyl alcohol and I just kind of lightly with a soft toothbrush, just kind of clean everything up, the contacts and everything, and just to make sure that there's no grime that's interfering with uh, the way it works. So for the cables, they get pretty nasty, and all I do is I take a rag, fill it with isopropyl alcohol, and just run it down, and that's the easiest way to clean that up pretty good. So this is junk. I mean, it just dances around, and that's normal. They just, they wear it like we talked about earlier. This one came with it. And I think it's pretty cool, and I like the lower profile compared to that one. If you kind of look at it, you kind of see that it just slightly sits lower, and it just feels really nice. It has a nice feel to it. And looking at the reviews, it doesn't suffer from the dr drifts or the cheap quality ones that there are out there, so I think that's going to be pretty nice. All right, this thing came out fantastic. This feels really good. All the buttons feel clicky, fresh, no stickiness. And yeah, very happy with it. So that's the last part. Now let's move on to clean the cartridges. Ridge Racer 64, never played it. Don't know if it's good, but it's got a lot of sticker residual over here. So typically the safest thing that I do to kind of preserve them, a little goo gone, let that soak in, considering the stickers kind of exposed over here. And the same thing over here. And we're kind of gonna get it right on this part that's on the cover. And I have found that this does not damage well, from my experience, do your own research, do things at your own risk, but it does not damage the actual cover over here. And all we're doing is just lightly agitating it in, and it's slowly taking that stuff off real easy. More so for the sticker, I really don't want to get this too, I don't really don't want to get this messed up. So I'm just kind of agitating it just nice and easy, and it's breaking off of my finger, some of that. I guess they had a price sticker or something on it. I'm not too sure. So keep doing this. And then what I do is I take a rag. Just wipe all this off. Now this one over here is a little more stuck on there. So that might require a little more work. But as you can see already, this is pretty much gone. This is gone over here. This one I'll probably just take a plastic razor and just scoop up this piece. Actually, it's coming off on my nail. And this thing will look good as new. So the final thing I do is I actually take the isopropyl alcohol. I go right through here and clean these contacts. And that's just gonna make sure that we have no issues running it. Let's do the back. This is something they should always do to all these old ca uh, cartridges. All right, looks almost good as new. Very happy with it. So now let's start put everything together and fire this thing up. All right, so now let's wrap this up. First thing we got to do, just like any computer, is upgrade the memory. So let's put in our expansion pack. This just goes in right over here, or maybe this way. Oh yeah, four megs of RAM. Pop our game in. Now we're going to put in our adapter so we can run HDMI. It's just to test it. Depending on how far I go down the rabbit hole, I may do a conversion on it or something. This goes plugged in just like that. It sticks out a little bit, but it feels secure. HDMI goes in like that. Plug in our controller. Put in our controller pack because, well, why not? Fire up. it's up and working and so far this feels really good let's do a quick play oh yeah definitely upgrading this stick right over here 
to this version, it feels a lot better. Now, a little HDMI conversion doesn't look terrible. And of course, this is not an upscaler. It's just actually just to adapt it to HDMI. But for the most part, this thing looks pretty awesome. So let's do one more little upgrade. Now, I picked this up on the Amazon and it's wireless. And that's something that I quite enjoy. It was like 50 bucks. So hopefully it's pretty good. Comes with a cool little keychain. Oh yeah, it's got a nice feel to it. Got turbo, clear, and I think the batteries are rechargeable, so that's kind of nice. And it has a little adapter, goes onto the Nintendo 64, you can put your rumble pack or your memory card in there, and this will allow me to play wirelessly. So let's go ahead and set this up. All right, so according to the distractions, this goes into here. It's gonna start blinking. Now it says hold the start button for three seconds to go into pairing mode. One, two, three. Yep, she's dead. Let's charge it. So now that it's charged up, pairing is simple as plugging that in, turning this thing on, Holding the start button for three seconds, a flash back and forth, and once these two are red and red, they're paired. So I got it paired up, changed games using Star Wars uh, Episode One Racer, and I gotta say this controller really um, makes playing the Nintendo 64 a lot better. And I get the concept of what Nintendo was trying to do with the Nintendo 64, but man this is way better and i think this would have been a more awesome experience had they came up with something like this um controller feels real good good response very happy with it and i definitely think it's a great upgrade uh, if you're trying to restore nintendo 64 and get back into it unless you're one of those that just really love that controller and you just can't let go of it but i can let go of it so let's wrap this up all right so that was actually a pretty cool project and definitely refreshing to do this thing was dirty cleaned up real nice was able to refurbish this controller and i gotta say going with this stick right over here made it so much better the ultra sauna cleaner did an amazing job just getting everything out of the crevices and just really bringing back this thing back to life and i'm definitely very happy with it another thing too is that if you're one of those that have good soldering skills and are really into this this is actually the time when you're cleaning it going this thorough to actually upgrade and maybe do that hdmi mod which i might look into that in the future with also changing the shell to a different color but i have a little fun with this this retro fighters brawler controller this thing is stinking awesome sweet I definitely like it and I look forward to the many hours I will be playing on this so so I got a bunch of games they're all safe in the protective sleeve upgraded the memory and this is gonna be a cool experience I'm actually gonna hook this up in the bedroom play some Paper Mario 64 which is honestly the real reason why I bought this and been working on this little project over here so yeah I just want to share this video of um, just kind of guide suggestion and a little uh, fun restoring a Nintendo 64 so thanks for watching and we'll see what we come up with next.